praises to the Most High, giving Him honor and glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings, family. It's quite early here, and I was just reviewing some more videos. And to give a part two to this whole thing, um, in reference to Jesus is the Son, not the Son. Okay, so if you haven't seen part one, please take the time to do so. But in this, you might get all what is needed. This brother who's sharing this, um, I want to say that he's bringing a lot of knowledge. But he does come across as if perhaps he don't believe in the Almighty. But please uh, don't let that, you know, put you in a mindset to say this can't be right. Because he's saying a lot of truth here. But as you listen to this brother, and I haven't seen, um, well, I have seen other videos of him, but I don't know his stand. But I just want to give that to you all at the top of this so you will not try to um, deflect from what is coming forth. Another thing I want to present is in this video, I'll add another storyline from Kemet that which is on the walls. What we have been shown by the world of Egypt, which is Kemet, they only showed us certain areas, you know, far as uh, the propaganda surrounding for tourists and um, and so forth. But the truth is, it's huge. It goes from all the way um, up the Nile towards Ethiopia of different locations of our writings, of our people, our ancestors who had left. It's like a book on a wall that they, in some cases, have destroy certain parts of certain things but for the most part family our brothers Astra Kiwizi and also Anthony Browder who followed in the footstep of Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben who have passed the torch to those two brothers they have been on the forefront for close nearly 40 years which they have done 14 years of one of them I know of a case study, of a study of the, what you call the hieroglyphs, which is Meter Netter. Okay. That's the name of the actual, the, what you would call the alphabets or the hieroglyphs. That's the name of it. Also, I want to add in here and say this, this storyline surrounding what you may consider a white Jesus and say that does not apply to the black Jesus. Well, brothers and sisters, then you still will be in a lie because it does. You move from Christianity and of, you know, saying, Oh, the white Jesus into Hebrew Israelite are either understanding even further. Like you say, well, I'm a band to, and still holding on to say, well, he was a black Messiah. It's still the same storyline. The same storyline of the white Jesus is the same storyline of the black Jesus. Whether you call him Mesindisi, Yesiah Congo, which I've heard once referred to as the Messiah, or Yahawashai, Hamashik. It's the same family, the same storyline that they took from the walls of Kemet surrounding Ra, which is the sun, which one may say sun God, surrounding Haru, which is the son of Aset and Asar. You have to understand that it was never safe for us to worship Haru, but you understand that Haru is showing is showing on the walls that the birthday of December the 25th is 
of Haru, but it lines up with the winter solstice. Okay. So you're going to hear this brother talk about that. But and again, for whatever reason that you may take on that this brother don't believe in our almighty, the most high. Don't let that shun you or stop you from listening to what this is. Okay. He's speaking truth, facts, but for whatever reason, why, when he made this video six years ago, he may be in a different place to know that the most high, because there, it would be no reason why we were awakened. We didn't have to be awakened to know we are the people to know this truth. It's a reason why father will waken us up, but we must understand that waking us up is in line up with the 12 tribes of the Bible that they speaks of. That's another thing we're going to have to deal with. The chosen people. So not only ones who <clears throat> in Christianity, <coughs> excuse me, have to come to grips with, oh, there's not that where you're going to be rapture and, you know, you understand in heaven is going to be on earth, but you say, no, it's above just not just the same as ones who are Hebrew Israelite who move into this 12 tribe chart that you're going to come to see that it lines up with the Zodiac signs. And it's this word called totem, which is an African word that each tribe had a totem, which is like a, a animal or, or, or a such thing that actually like, you know, put forth just like if you had a mascot, for your, your, your colleges or your high schools, but it represent your tribe. No different than when you think of the 12 tribes and how it's all lined up. Those things that were spoken of in reference to the lion for Judah is called a totem. Here we go, brothers and sisters. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And a lot of people praise Jesus every day. Now what I want to show in this video that Jesus is not the son of God. Nobody knows who God is. But I want to show that Jesus is the son as you. We might not know who directly um, all in all about them all, almighty, but we know that is a higher power. And I didn't, I don't know why he did not clarify that, but there is a higher power show enough our creator. And maybe in other videos he may have shared this. So I don't want to take nothing away from this brother, but I just want you all not to get stuck on. Well, we don't know who God is. Well, who, who is this guy? He's talking crazy. No, keep continue to listen. Just listen. And not the son, S O N. Now, what you got to think about is this way back during ancient times, the most scariest thing to people was the night because at night it got dark. I'm gonna move back a little bit because when I was talking. Way back during ancient times, the most scariest thing to people was the night. Because at night, it got dark, it was pitch black outside, and you couldn't see all the predator animals coming out to eat people and to, you know, cause mischief. So the sun basically helped uh, keep the people warm, it grew the crops, it made rain so the crops can grow. You know, the sun was their savior. It was their risen savior from the darkness. Now, most ancient races worship the sun. The Egyptians worship Ra, they worshiped Amon, and they worshiped Horus. These were sun deities. Now, basically, you had Ra, which was a representation of the sun. He was a sun god. That's where you basically get Jesus. Jesus is basically a representation of the sun. Now, they show you this in many ways. They show it to you in the Bible, and they show it to you all over the world. People just can't put it together because they don't know what to look for. Now, let me show you how they throw this stuff in your face in ways that's harder to see than others. 
Now, this is the cross of the zodiac. Now, if you ever look at the cross of the zodiac, you always see that there's a sun in the middle. Now, this sun represents Jesus or represents God. Now, basically, what you have is on December 21st begins the winter solstice. Now, from December 22nd to December 25th, the sun is dead. It basically does not move. And that's how the ancients saw it. They saw it as the sun dying on December 22nd because it didn't move for three whole days. On December 25th, the sun moves one degree north. So it is said in the Bible, Jesus rose on the third day. And he died on the cross. It's not so much a cross. It's the cross of the zodiac, not a, a physical cross. And he rose on the third day. He was born again. So it says Jesus' birthday is on December 25th, Christmas. It means he was born again on December 25th. The reason why they make his risen day Easter, which is in the springtime, is because Easter, or the spring, it, it begins when the sun is on the equator. It's at the, the midpoint of the earth, and it starts its way back. It marches, then springs towards summer. So the sun is at the equator around springtime. And that's why I said Jesus uh, rose again, because you start seeing the miracles of the sun during the spring. So what happens? The lakes melt, and you start to see the sun walking on water. What else happened? Uh, plants grow. You know, it brings the dead alive. The dead plants come back to life. What else happened? You have grapes. Now, you have the sun creates rain. So it rains on these grape vines and they grow grapes. So basically, you have the sun changing water into wine. So the vineyards start to grow grapes. And it is the vine or the vine on the grape vine. So. It's not a play on words. This is all where they get this stuff from. And because you think it's play on words, because your mind is not putting this stuff together, you don't see how easy it is to figure out where they got these stories from. Now, Jesus had five wounds. He had one in each hand. He had one in each foot. And he had the one in the rib, the one that it said that basically killed him. Those five wounds represent the five winter months or the five months that the sun is at its lower lowest point so you have october november december january february the five months that's what they represent now if you look at the zodiac you can see where those months would fit then you get to march and then the sun marches up springs back into action and heads to its highest point uh, which is the summertime, when it's uh, really warm, when everything starts to happen. Okay, so, just look at the cross of the zodiac. If you ever look at the cross of the zodiac, you'll, you'll always see in the middle that circle, or the sun is there. So, if you take just that cross out, you'll have what you see at the top of churches. Most churches have that cross. And It's always that circle there. That circle represents the sun because it's the sun on the cross of the zodiac. That sun is Jesus, which is why when you see pictures of Jesus, you see the sun behind his head or the halo, the halo. The crown of thorns that they put on his head represents the sun rays of the sun. This is where it all comes from. It is not a play on words. This is where they got the story from. If you do your research, if you just read the Bible, you'll see exactly what they have done. Okay, so let's look at the Bible. The Bible hints a lot about this. They give you little hints and little clues trying to tell you that Jesus, God, is the Son. Now, if you look at Job 36, starting at uh, verse 34, 24, it tells you this. It says, remember that thou magnify his works. Now, ask yourself, what is it talking about? Is it talking about God or the Son? Which men behold. Every man may see it. Man may behold it afar off. You behold the sun afar off. Behold, God is great. He just called God the sun, and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. For he maketh the drops of water, they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof. The sun makes water vapor to create rain which the clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. The sun does this. 
Also, can any understand the spreading of the clouds? What spreads the clouds? The sun and the noise of his tabernacle. Thunder. Behold, he spreadeth his light upon it. Who? Is it the sun or God? He's talking about the sun. And covereth the bottom of the sea. What covereth? I mean, you can see the sun on the water. It's clearly talking about the sun. But, I'm going to give you another one. Let's look at Joshua. Chapter 10, starting at verse 12. Let's go to 14. But, let's start at 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the midst of Agilon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jezar? Jezar is another book they left out of the Bible. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Now, this is the part you got to really read. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord, notice he just called the sun the Lord. He just called the sun God. Hearken unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Pay attention to what you read, and this is how they trick you. If you just read again from 12 to 14, it's talking about the sun. Then it automatically just switches off and calls the sun the Lord, God. Now, why would it say the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man for the first time in this verse when we know that the Lord hearkened to many men in the Bible. It said, no day like this before or after it that the Lord hearkened unto a man. We know that's bullshit. What about Moses? What about Noah? What about Job? What about Daniel? What about all the people in the Bible that the Lord hearkened to? This is another thing that people don't realize when they read the Bible because they lose all common sense. It just called God the Son. Now, if you think this is all some kind of coincidence, then you are more brainwashed than you realize. You have to understand that if you're going to create something like the Bible and use it to control people, you're going to have fail safes. And if their fail safe, their excuse for every problem with the Bible is Satan or the devil did it. And that's what they use. They play off of your fear. They play, they play off of your emotions. They play off of your hope. Because rich people don't need hope. They can buy just about everything they need. Poor people need hope. People who need some kind of help need hope. And the problem is, the reason why people don't want to let this Bible go is because their life is not right. And it's hard for them to get their life where they want to be. They have hopes and dreams. And because they can't get it on their own, or because no person physically will help them out, they seek some kind of divine help. Some kind of help from a presence that's beyond this world or beyond this whole physical uh, uh, material world that we live in. And what they've done is they're praying on that. They're praying on your hope. They're praying on your desperation and your want for a better life. See, but the problem is this. Don't nobody do any research and don't nobody ask any questions. They just accept this book as is. I mean, there's some major things in this book that I don't understand how people could just sit back and accept it as a fact just because they want some money or because they want a material thing. People are not religious for spiritual gain. They become religious because they hate their life and they want a better life for themselves. And they know this. Now, if you go back in history and research what was going on with the Bible, you see. I don't agree with him on that. I know that is a higher power. I know that, you know, there are people that seeking for, you know, um, different things such as monetary or to be, you know, this or be that. But the most high through my testimonies, if you all have been following, it's not about money. It's about his, as far as manifestation, his power can move and shift things. I just found out yesterday that a bill that I, another bill I had is cut in half. It's like it's diminishing. How's that? How is that? If you know my testimonies, hands down, the most high is real. But in getting to a place 
when, you know, we fell from grace and it shows because we are scattered and the ships and so forth have taken us. That, that is it that all that we know that we did? I can't answer that right now. But we must, must understand and, and, and come to grips with is that in the timeline, once you, you know, seek the most high, you crying out. And he, and then it shows also a timeline that he'd given as if, as if he said, this will be a timeline that I will not make myself known, known to the world, but to certain people, how I had a relationship. I'm, 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 I have to use myself as an example, not the only example, but I only could speak for myself because I only know me wholeheartedly. You understand? But throughout the years of my life, Father have showed me that he was real. Some people say they don't know. And so this brother comes across, you know, in some cases, like he don't believe in the most high. Now this was six years ago. I don't know where he's at. I don't put no, you know, nothing on this and say that because I don't know it all. I would love to listen to some more videos of his and, um, and, and share because I love the way he came across about doing this and showing all what he showed to make a valid point. Okay. But let's finish this up. What he's else he got to say here. See that other leaders seen that the Catholic Church was doing really good at controlling areas with this religion. So they copied and came up with their own religions. That's what the Crusades was all about. It was about them. So let me pause there. So just keep in mind that these people knew that there were going to be a time where Father would take his power his grace and mercy off of some people. So they, they capitalize on that. And they still think in the day as this thing is shifting, they still can, but they're seeing that, Oh, it ain't easy. Like it used to be. You understand? So yes, it's something more deeper. I want to say than what we were taught about what's in the Bible that father turned his face away from us and bring the storyline about Esau, which that is actually, the spirit of that person, a people, real deal people, which that storyline, I haven't heard from anyone on the continent said there was a, a set of, of twins that there were rivals and, 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 and one, you know, became powerful. Then the next will come powerful after I haven't heard that storyline from anyone on the, on the continent as of them speaking it out, not going in the book to get that you understand. Okay. So, while I'm on this point right here, um, when I came to understand about the Messiah wasn't, you know, real in the sense of what the most high had given me when I was seeking him, I went on a seven days fast, but on the second day, father answered me on the second day. Okay. And the questions that he asked me three words, was I meek? I had to look it up and answer it. He asked also, was a what far as being righteous? Also, justice. And once I answer it, then that's when Father gave me Deuteronomy 6 and 4, saying that he was one, saying that the whole thing surrounding the Trinity, that's not true. And which, you know, have me to understand about the Jesus, Jesus Christ storyline. So from that point, I started bringing forth what father had given me, but it's very interesting how these three words lines up with my art. If you don't know what my art is, it's lined up with what they believe is ones on the wall of, uh, Kemet, which ones are saying that, no, the 10 commandment comes from the my art. Do you understand? It was 42, um, which was listed on the walls of Kemet. Okay. But the only thing different here, instead of the word meek, um, it was truth. So on the wall of Kemet, it lines up surrounding truth, righteous, and justice that represent that's line up with Ma'at. Okay. So anything else here? Um, So we must, you know, like I said, go deeper. And if you're not there yet to understand 
about the Messiah, no matter what color he is, no matter what name you give him, that storyline still yet circles around a lie about this whole thing about reference to the son. Okay. S U N. So our people, we know we in a situation cause we live in a real deal. We still oppressed. We still en enslaved, but in another form in so many places or ways that people so controlling over us. Right? So we know that father's going to redeem us and restore us according to the scriptures. But we know that's the ultimate thing because why would he wake us up? We could have just lived our rest of our life and wait on sweet Jesus. But father woke us up to know who we are truthfully. So, so in this, whether father touch an, an anoint one to be before us as a Messiah, as a real Messiah and don't get caught up with say, well, you know, before the white Messiah was a black Messiah, it was all over Europe. It was all different places. Well, the, the lie already had, had manifest with the, the sun God thing already been out there because these people deep down you know, knew that there would be a redemption for people who will be taken in captivity and who will be enslaved, who will be colonized. So, so even though they said, well, he was black, they made him white. Now we making him black again. That is still following the same storyline of the scriptures that still make it not right. If you get my point, please understand. Who's our redeemer? Who's our savior is the most high. The most High can touch someone and anoint them and have them to be before his people to relate to our enemies. What is what? But this whole thing about Jesus Christ and storyline, whether you make them black or white and you change the name is line up surrounding the whole concept of a son, God, a son in the sky. But these people knew, right? As this, the most high knows all about this, how we are going around circles, how we going back and forth with each other. The most high knows this methodically all this from what I understand and get most high already knew this. The most high set this whole thing up. And the question that we should be asking why respectfully, it's deeper than what we ever could imagine. But are we on the right path? I would say so by us seeking the most high and building that relationship with our creator. Hallelujah. All right, family. Going out and wiping out all these other copiers, all these other religions. It's like if you're the mob and you're running something and then this other group comes along and try to set up shop on your turf. It's going to be a street battle. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a war. That's what the Crusades was about. They were saying, hey, we came up with this religion thing first. We're going to come and knock y'all off and make y'all people worship our God. And that's what they did. And over time, it stuck. The Bible is a weapon. If you ever seen the movie, The Book of Eli, they kind of hint to it. Listen to this clip. Is still being used today as a weapon to control people and until you have faith in yourself and realize you can get what you want on your own you will always be a slave thanks for watching this video please comment and share it because facebook limits okay so um they're saying all they need is the book well the cat is out the bag that the days are over about this book gonna control the massive that means and should tell us you me and all that our redemption is near. Our restoral is near back into a, a place where 
those who are ruling, they're ruling from a wicked whole place. So that should tell us that there are a lot of truth in the Bible that speaks of the spirit surrounding Esau, which is, you know, the whole thing that is show who are ruling the earth today. That spirit. Okay. All right. Hold tight, fam. I have another part to this. Here is one of the few places that we can see the spiritual Netahed, divine husband, and the spiritual Netahed, divine wife. And that is a star and a set that we see right here called on the show. Again, we can see the desecration that was done to a set and chiseling out her face and all these things as well as you can see the chiseling out going on over here. So they just got tired of chiseling. <laughs> Because if you look at the books in stone, our ancestors carved everywhere. As I said, as though, as though we would know, so we could know where the original story came from, and that we may not know our story, and that's pretty much what the case is today. So again, here we see Asar, he's standing on Ma'at. And even though he's the spiritual one, who represents resurrection and salvation, he equally must stand on Ma'at of truth. Justice and righteousness. Okay. He's holding the, also the Heka and then the Heka. That means he's the ruler of life in the spiritual realm of both upper and lower Egypt. But Set, we know that's her because she always has the throne on her head. Why does she got the throne on her head? Because in order for the king or the minister to sit on the throne, the king must do what? Go through the woman. Come through her. So that's the matrilineal line of ancient Kemet that we see right here of the spiritual system. Was there any Cain and Abel story yet? No. No. There was no Hebrew story of Cain and Abel. And even in that story, one should ask questions. Because there was only Adam and Eve on the story. Is that right? Okay. It's like telling a child a story. The child's going to follow the chronology. Is that right? Right. So there's only, there's only Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve have what? Cain, Cain and Abel. Children, is that right? Yeah. Cain and Abel. And then Cain kills Abel and goes out to the land of Nod and finds himself a wife. The story's already messed up. <laughs> okay, you can't tell a child a story. The child's going to put you in check on that one. Right. Wait a minute. Well, so when you ask some of these ministers, I'm not talking about all ministers. you got some liberating ministers out there. So don't think that I'm against all the them. I'm against the Negro minister. Okay? The Negro minister who still wants to deify and project images that is represented as this Serapis Jesus. Okay? But back to that story again. Here we can see again the whole Cain and Abel story. Cain goes out to the land of Nod and finds himself a wife. When you ask some of the preachers about this, he will say, well, that was the sub Negroid race. Here, that psychopathic racism that was brought down by the church. And the problem is with the Hebrew story, and this is what the problem is coming up to this very day. That means the creation of the world that they had. It's the same time, around the same time, that Norma is setting up his kingdom. Is that the sub negroid race they're talking about? Do they are also telling us that they know that Kemet was here, but they're going to call it the sub negroid race because they see the validity in the fact that our history was going on thousands of years before the Adam and Eve story, thousands of years before the Genesis creation story. But now the world has been brainwashed to only think of a one story is a Hebrew story. And then that's why we had to be, that's why they had to demonize and vilify who we are. Saying we were cursed. So black folks, some black folks still walk around in America saying, well, you know, our condition, we cursed. Because we've been brainwashed. Knowing that African people, black people's story go back thousands of years before some Hebrew religion. So to wipe you out mentally and psychologically, then saying you're cursed, where well, they created that at the conference of Jamia 90 AD. Study these ecumenical conferences. In studying them, this is how they develop these things. Religious gangsters. God had nothing to do with this. If anything, God mad at you because you accepted it. Okay? And then it ended up in the Babylonian Talmud version of the Bible around 550, okay, B.C. 
and then they incorporated it into Bible teachings, and then that became something because the Bible is the infallible word of God. Mm -hmm. So since it's the infallible word of That's God, that's what they said. It must be true. All right. Here we are. Put a head down low and just say we curse. Okay, so family, the full circle of this is that this brother and others that have been studying the lineup of Kemet, a lot of them to me have not. And see, this he was going there in his early 30s, and you see that, of course, he have you know, um, he's older now, and but he's been there, you know, like I said, near 40 years going back and forth to Kemet. Okay, the part that they that I see that a lot of people who have went from Christianity to Kemet, they miss the fact of the awakening of us who we had visitation to let us know that we are the people, the chosen people. However, when father took us or taken us around our wheel, you know, some people are still stagnated for whatever reason, however reason, but those who are moving around the wheel, we have something to bring forth to these people who went to Kemet and their spirituality, perhaps, are they not understanding that it's something that is going to happen beyond us waking up or after we waken up that there's, they're going to be where, um, we will be put back as the chosen people in our rightful place. When, when the Pharaohs were paraded, I want to say and believe that it was parade to show the world that it was a countdown to more things to come to will put us back into our rightful place, giving the signs out to those who are out there who have been benefiting, monopolizing and, 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 and so forth upon the most high's people. You understand? So this is our part to them, like him, for instance, for me to even say a father put me in the pathway to give the testimonies that to let me let him know I, I didn't have nothing to do with Kemet. I was visited by a voice of the most high that led me to understand who I am and to get me to where you at now to connect with you. But a lot of them not acknowledging this part because is we will be the one to bring it. And you see how we're going to come together as one. Cause I'm pretty sure they're probably looking at, uh, the ones who say they awaken are awakening up and the Hebrew Israelites and so forth and that they're like, Oh, they, they just taken on another, uh, version of the same story. They still ain't finding themselves. They need to come to Kemet. I, I'm pretty sure that's probably what they're saying, but it's very interesting. Do y'all see it coming together? Y'all see how it's going to work that I see and say, I believe let's continue. This is Thomism that they were inflicting Clarence Thomas with. Because in the Babylonian Thomas version of the Bible, it said that you are cursed if you got an elongated penis. <laughs> when they were talking about Clarence Thomas' penis at those hearings, he said, this is Thomanism because that was part of the Babylonian Thoman curse is that we were shamefully elongated. It's no It's shame. This is sad. That was literally brought out. I said, wow, they brought this out in the clear promise. Really? The Thoman, the Babylonian Thoman? They said we had red eyes, adjusted lips, and all kind of stuff they said in that Babylonian Tobit Bible. So that's what they brought out. And that's why during the Jim Crow period, white folks had, would hang a brother, the blood would go down to his elongated penis, and what did they do? Cut it off. Cut it off. Roasted it, barbecued it, put it in souvenirs. It's it all king to the garment. Did not show you king to the garment. Where's king to the garment's penis at? I mean, they took it, dug up king.
team took over and then the first thing they did was cut off his feet. Nobody can't find team to the promised field. So just to add in to uh, make sure you all aware, this is not just, oh, this is the only wall. No. Like I said, the the uh, ones that call themselves Egyptians today, um, they take ones on tours and they don't go into deeper detail and connect the Bible to this truth. You understand? They just, you know, just like, like any tour you go on and they'll say, look over to your right. This is such and such and such and this and that and that. And they can add whatever they want to add in. But these brothers, for instance, here, who you see there, Astra Kawizi, he has been studying this. He said he was in a field study for 14 years. So he learned the, um, the Metternetter, which is called the hieroglyphs, all of that, that he learned. And he been there, like I said, altogether 40 years. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And it goes from the stretch of what we would call upper or lower Egypt, all the way down to Ethiopia, which said it will follow the now of where he would take our people and, and, and take them to on this tour and they'll have different days. You understand? And whatever they learn for that day, they go and meet that Ethan and, and, you know, talk about what they learn and they prepare him, them also for the next day when they go on the next tour. It was like a two weeks tour. Okay. Two weeks, a two weeks tour family. And they mean people, our people have been going over there for, you know, um, for, you know, 40, um, 60, I said 40, 60 years. Cause it was when Dr. Ben them, you know, were younger also and Dr. Clock, all of them people were going over there. And so a lot of our people already knew this truth about the whole lies and deceit about the Bible. But like I said, when you imagine you get our, uh, researchers like T O T O T I'm sorry, T E O T W ministry, the is a car page. Um, Josh McCullen, which is, um, from the Hebrew nation building, all of them there. Um, Ben L Israel. Um, Oh, I, I just, Ooh, I'm, I'm just in, in all the researchers, all the deep, deep researchers, um, big Judah, big Levi. If you imagine when you get all what they know about our awakening and they accept the fact that this is true, that us on this wall telling us about our history and get these ones who've been in the lineup for 40 years, get to get, you imagine when they get together, how they going to bridge the gap? Do y'all see what I'm saying? So a lot of the ones names that I named, a lot of them still at a certain part in the wheel. They still holding on to Yahweh shy. They still holding on to, um, Oh, Kim is, is our enemy. Egypt is our enemy. The Egyptians are our enemy when they're going to all come to find out what it appears to me that we all the same. The Canaanites, the Israelites, the Egyptians, all by words. We were all the same people in the same place at the same time and migrated out of, out of the area, which we are known to be the Bantus went down into what Saharan to the East, to the West, to the central and to the South. And the slave ships came and got us. And then those that came on colonized the continent of Africa. Hallelujah. And then where we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. When they get to that place. And they, they, they understand that the most high allowed this grand of history about people. And it's not his people history. The, the only history of his people is in a book, but not outside the book. The devil is a liar. Wake up, my brothers and sisters. Wake up. We're dealing with some sick people. Huh? Yes, peace be upon Tech Grandmaster, Teacher Dr. Francis Wells. That is the fear. Their fear is genetic annihilation through that elongated penis. Hmm? It's deep. I know it's hard. Now, as we look at this and see how they came through here and 
pencil out all these images. Now here's the cross. Look at the cross. Is this Christianity yet? No. No. It didn't exist yet. Now that, that's the what? The absolute. Is that right? The absolute means what? Spiritual, spiritual resu resurrection. resurrection. It has nothing to do with the corpse. But look how they chisel out here, the spiritual goddess right here. But look right here of the arm. They took out the wound. So you see what they chisel out. They took. They trying to take away the the storyline. So the cross is also mm -hmm. a corruption of the Amsu, but also they, they, they see also over there when they chisel out the stuff. So they want you to know the they were trying to take away the truth. Like remove some of the words, you know, from. On the monuments and temples to tell us the truth, and we start to see these things, and you start to go back, and now you can see how systematically it was orchestrated make sure that we are written out of history. They, in fact, they tried to write whole, all of Egypt out of history by creating what is called Hegoism. I'm going to talk about it tonight. And Hego said Egypt had nothing to do with Africa. So in the minds of some of our own people, you say, well, I went to, I went to uh, Africa. Well, where would you go in Africa? Well, I went to Egypt. Well, Egypt is not in Africa. It's in the Middle East. Well, if you got a Middle East, where's the Middle West? Where's the Middle Sword? North. Where's the middle south? Since you got some middle of these places, we've got to find the middle of all these places. Is that right? That's the logical thinking of it. Is that right? So again, psychologically and, uh, and academically, they literally wrote Egypt out because now they want this for themselves because Europe has no ancient history. It has none. Mm -hmm. The best that they can go back to is the Greek period with Thales and the Iliad and the Odyssey around 800 years B.C. That's it. Right. And they know that. But when you start to deal with these papyruses, you're not dealing with, no, 800 years B.C. You're dealing with thousands of years, brothers and sisters. Thousands. So we got a couple more things to show you before we leave the temple, before we go into the Nubia Museum, and before we go there, uh, down to another part. By the way, we're going to speak to you on a couple of things here. Okay. So, family, this is so deep. And, um, like, you know, like I say, I, I am, um, uh, greatly moved in touch and I gave all praises to the most high because it's a full circle and the most high allowed this for whatever reason, we'll find out one day, you know, all the truth of all what's behind this, you understand? So, um, I strongly suggest that you um, start, you know, following Astra Kawizi. He has a website called Kemet New, which is K E M E T New N U dot com. And um, they just was at, I guess, in Kemet about a couple of months ago. Um, well, three months ago, you see this was videotaped. So this person went, but there's another page that, um, which is uh, Astra Kawizi page. It's called Kemet New right here on YouTube. And you'll see a lot of his um, videos that he's done over the years. Okay. Then Anthony Browder. Those are the only two right now that I feel like the most I've put in my pathway. Um, that who was on taking ones on the tours. But remember when our brothers that who are in the truth of understanding that we are the chosen people. But the Hebrew Israelite is a byword. You understand when we come to understand that and they bridge gap with uh, connect with these brothers here and ones like them to see these just say we here another hundred years in this situation. Well, these, you know, ones that Anthony Browder and um, and this young, you know, I say young man, this, you know, um, brother right here, you know, they're getting older. They, you can see, you check them out from back in the day and up until now. But, you know, they still, they, hey, they still out on the forefront sharing this truth. But the spirituality side of it, they're not, to me, not connecting with. And that's where we come into the play and bring that to them. So you imagine when our brothers, like I named them out, Big Judah, Big Levi, T-E-O-T-W ministry. You know, even the ones from uh, the, the, the Messiah, um, Jonathan, Jonathan, um, you know, the Issachar, all of these deep researchers. 
you imagine to get with these brothers This is the world don't want. This is what our enemies don't want. They don't want this to happen. Oh, they got part truth here. Okay, so they've been taking them on the, um, you know, in Egypt. Oh, Kemet, that's fine. Then you got the ones calling themselves Hebrew Israelite. Well, let's ignore them because they don't have the full story yet either, but they're getting there. But you imagine one day, it's all going to come together. All praises to the Most High. Give them honor and glory. Take care of family. See you in the next video. Montando and Ghetto.